Health Focus is brought to you by National Medical Stores, NMS, passionate about your life. Projections of a third and more extreme wave of the COVID-19 infection in the country, according to scientists, shows a likely peak of 4,000 cases per day, over two times higher than the second wave. This means that 15% of the patients will require admission at health facilities and about 9,331 will require high dependency and intensive care. With this insight, the Deputy Director of Mlago Specialized Hospital, Dr. Rosemary Bianima, says preparations for such a situation need to be more than doubled. Well, as a hospital, of course, it's quite challenging to ensure that you have enough beds ready for admission because it needs a lot of resources. So um, saying that we'll set up the entire block when we are only utilizing one level, it's rather a tall order. But that would be probably the ideal. But then also the human resource. Once you engage the human resource, then that means you also have to take care of the allowances and financially, of course, that is constri uh, would constrain the institution and the ministry. Uh, two, we need a lot of coordination. And at one time, uh, we thought the admission team would take care of the triage area, but then we realized that we need two separate teams, those who are receiving, and then they hand over to another team which does the triage. But it's a learning process, when, and, and you have to be very flexible. And Dr. Bianima says the second wave strained the medical teams and this was on two fronts from patients coming to hospital late due to home care, but also a poorly coordinated referral system. Although we had expanded and trained our teams, it was training us on our drugs and sundries and would enter into crisis when we have requested thinking that what we have is optimal and the number of cases overwhelm us and we run out and would have quickly to make emergency orders to the national medical stores. Sometimes you would have uh, six ambulances arriving at the same time and of course uh, that causes a challenge because you have to have oxygen cylinders to use to transfer these patients from the ambulance, uh, record their vitals and then determine their severity of the disease and determine on which ward to uh, re uh, admit those patients. She says the regional referrals and private hospitals should be open about treatment progress of patients and not only refer critically ill people to the national referral. Um, don't wait to refer when it's a little late. Or when you see that the prognosis is bad, the outcomes may not be improved by the transfer. I know that is a very difficult decision and very ethical challenge, but we should own up and be able to counsel families and uh, uh, prepare them. A referral system is also kind of a process when you realize that the patient is going down here, you start the process of referring. And uh, you summarize the clinical notes, re-examine, and write a report, and then call for an ambulance, and also inquire with the institution which is going to take on the patient. Scientists have since proven that vaccination reduces the chances of severe disease. So far, more than 1.4 million people have been vaccinated and the Minister of Health says at least 11 million people will be vaccinated by the end of this year. However, social rights activist Alana Kembabazi says there is still more to do regarding vaccination. You recall at the beginning the president said we are getting so many beds. The next wave hits, we don't have the beds. People are sitting there, you see them in ambulances sitting there with enough oxygen just to transport, dying there waiting to get a bed. Are our ICU beds really in place now? Have they been installed in every regional hospital? Have we addressed the oxygen crisis? Do we make sure that there are functional regional, the, the functional oxygen plants, at least in every regional referral hospital, at the lower level we have the oximeters, we have all of that. 
Can we actually invest in a public health system? And in Kampala, the capital city authority is expanding the vaccination reach through outreaches. This week, starting on Monday, we started a vaccination campaign and we, have, we are targeting 100,000 doses given to people of Kampala across all our static sites and an additional outreach site, out, additional outreach sites which, which will cover about 50% of the COVID cases. Uganda has so far received 2 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, 300,000 doses of China's Sinovac, and 647,000 doses of Moderna vaccine. Countrywide, 1,100,000 people have so far received the first dose and 398,000 have been fully vaccinated. In Kampala, 207,000 people have received a single shot with 92,000 being fully vaccinated. KCCA has also vaccinated 11,013 teachers out of the targeted 20,000. The national target stands at 550,000 teachers with almost half the figure partially vaccinated. Walter Mwesi J, NTV. National Medical Stores, NMS, passionate about your life. With support from the Ministry of Health, procure, store and distribute essential medicine and medical supplies to all government health facilities